Three, two, one. This is SN4. Today, we'll dive into the design, construction, and testing of this motor, and all about how it works. Visibly, SN4 stands out compared to SN3 and other motors. Unlike other motors I've made, SN4 is designed to fly. This motor has many improvements over the others, such as external nozzle geometry, and a pressure sensor that I'll go more in depth with later. Starting off with the nozzle, all internal geometry stays the same as SN3. However, the exterior is noticeably different. SN4's nozzle is going back to 6061 aluminum, just like SN1. From our experience with SN1, we've learned that aluminum nozzles don't hold up as well for multiple reuses. To address this, I decided to hard coat anodize the entire nozzle on SN4. This creates a tough outer shell, hopefully offering better protection against the heat and erosion caused during the test. As of now, I have no clue how this nozzle will hold up. After doing some research and talking to some people, it seems plausible. But without knowing the exact temperature and environment within the combustion chamber, it's best to test it out and see what happens. There are several benefits to using aluminum over stainless steel. But one of the most important benefits is that aluminum is much less dense than stainless steel. But it does come with one drawback. It has a significantly lower melting point. This is why SN4's nozzle is a bit bulkier than SN3's, to disperse heat. The thin walls on SN3's stainless steel nozzle would not hold up as good if they were aluminum. One of the most important changes is repositioning the bolt holes further away from the edge of the casing. On SN3, the bolt holes were too close to the edge, which weakened the casing during the first test and ultimately ruptured the motor on the second test. By positioning the bolt holes further inward on SN4, the risk of a rud is less likely. The bulkhead is pretty straightforward. It is very similar to SN3's, but also has the bolt holes positioned more inwards. But unlike SN3, SN4 has two variants of bulkheads. The one will be used for when the motor flies, and the other one is for today's test. It features a 1 8 inch MPT threaded hole to accommodate a pressure sensor. This pressure sensor will help gather more information on how the internal combustion chamber works and its data will help make tweaks for future tests. SN4 will carry slightly less propellant than SN3. This motor is intended to fly if all components check out. The reduced propellant load helps keep the rocket build and testing more manageable. The propellant was casted using the same process as SN3, featuring a 5-fin finisole design and a 3 4 inch core diameter in an overall diameter of two inches. The propellant formulation remains identical to SN3, Rocket Candy. The rest of SN4's construction closely mirrors my previous motors. I designed a custom jig to ensure precise drilling of the bolt holes around the casing. For the igniter, I use a small ball of propellant over a modified E-fuse. This ignition method has been very reliable for me. I also line the propellant with a small layer of black powder. This helps increase the startup temperature. If you'd like to dive deeper in any of these topics, please check out my previous videos. The assembly is straightforward, starting off with the attachment of the bulkhead, and then tighten the total of six bolts around the casing. And then it's time to load the propellant. Once the propellant is loaded, it's time to attach the nozzle. And finally, the integration of the igniter. Once that's all finished, it's time to set up the motor at the test site. Before we get to the test footage, I would like to thank today's sponsor, JLC PCB. JLC PCB manufactured all the custom parts for SN4, providing reliable, high quality components that make projects like this possible. I highly recommend their services for anyone working on DIY projects, prototypes, or large-scale production. They offer custom PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, 3D printing, and even assembly services. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, JLC PCB makes bringing your ideas to life easier and more affordable than ever. Make sure to check out their website by using the link in the description below. 
Start your next project with JLC PCB today. Once the motor is secured in the test stand and the area is cleared, it is time to ignite this motor. Let's first take an overall look on how SN4 performed. Looking at the data from the load cell first, we see the peak thrust was 65 pounds, just as expected, and the total impulse was 88 pound force. The internal pressure peaked at 312 PSI. You may notice I need to make a custom adapter to make these components work together. This adapter transfers the force from the motor to the load cell without interfering with the pressure transducer. Before we see the outcome of the nozzle, here's a cool slow motion of the nozzle melting away. As you may expect, this totally destroyed my GoPro. It shot molten metal at the lens. As we saw from the test footage, the nozzle did not hold up too well. Once again, this was just an experimental nozzle, and for future tests, I will swap it out with a proven stainless steel nozzle. Here's the nozzle right after disassembly. There is a lot of soot and residue on it. You can see how most of the o-ring groove totally melted away, snapping in the o-ring. After a quick clean, you can really see the damage. It's crazy you can see the bolt threads from where the bolts came in to the nozzle. It was very lucky that the burnout occurred mostly at the end of the test. If it occurred any faster, the bolt holes would have been exposed, leading to the gas escaping through them. This would have definitely resulted in way more damage to the motor. Keep an eye out, I will be posting an in-depth video analysis of all the data and hardware soon. I also have many more camera views to share. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you could like, share, and subscribe. If you like the improved video quality, let me know in the comments below. Between the script, filming, and editing, this has been one of my most complex videos yet. If you'd like to support my work, you can buy me a cup of coffee. Every bit helps.